So I want to make a video, it's kind of mainly for me, uh, to show the process I use for setting up a, a smart plug. In this case this is a Sonoff um, S20 smart plug. And uh, so normally you, first step, this is assuming you're going to flash it with Tasmoda software and uh, you've already uh, flashed it and you've got it inside the access point mode. So I hope this comes out. One of these days I'm going to learn how to take videos of my desktop screen, but for now hopefully this will work out. Again, mainly this is for me, um, but hopefully it helps somebody out. out. So normally you would um, access this through your cell phone, but it would be hard to film this on my cell phone. So what you'd do is uh, open up your cell phone and uh, look for the access point, and you'd see uh, some kind of access point saying like sound off or something to that effect. Um, and you just connect to it and then you would get in here and the first thing you'd want to do is go to your Wi-Fi settings and uh, type in your SSID your SSID password and then hit save and it should probably reboot at that point point. Um, and then what it's going to do uh, is connect to that access point so now it's going to be on your network and from there you'd go into your access point I'd recommend reserving an IP address um, so that whenever it boots up that uh, IP address will always be the same for that device so and I've already done that here because like I said it'd be hard on a cell phone so that was the first step there is just going in and setting up your access point so it is on your network next thing I would do would be go to your uh, configuration modules and you'll see um, it's probably not the correct device. This is set up for a Sonoff Basic by default, and this is an S uh, S20. So you'd go over to the Tasmoda website and find your device list, and here's the Sonoff S20. So you'd click on that, and then you just simply take this template here. Um, I'm gonna say select all. Oh, that didn't work good. I guess I'm gonna have to drag it. And then you're going to copy that, come over to your Tasmodo device, and oop, how do you do that? Um, hold on. So basically, what I need to do is find out how to change this module, and I thought it was in here. Let's see if there's one on the bottom. Now, let me find the spot for this. Okay, found it. So you go to um. From your main menu, you're going to go to configuration. I think it was in configure other and this template right here. And you can kind of tell you're in the right spot because it's going to start with name, it says it's a template and over here. So, what I'm going to do here is just get rid of all this and then paste in that template there. I hit enter, that probably wasn't a good thing to do, but it's uh device will restart in a few seconds. And so then I'm gonna try to connect again. There I go. Now if I go to um configuration module, there I'm gonna select Sonoff 20, which wasn't there before, it's on the top. Then I'm gonna hit save on that. It's gonna reboot again apparently. I restart. Give it a few seconds here. And then connect there. And so I'm back to the main menu. Now it says sign off 20 up here. Um, next I'm going to work on my uh, MQTT broker, which I recommend that's the way you talk to these devices. So I go here and you don't want to mess with anything in here and in fact I even leave this because I usually use sign off devices um, in your MQQ, MQTT broker you had to set up a username and password so this is like the username I kinda recommend you use you don't have to do it this way but it's one less step you have to do and then make unique password the topic I kinda of don't like the way they did this um, in fact 
I don't know if this is bad or not, but uh, what I'll do is change the topic to match, um, I believe it's the friendly name. And I just happen to know, let me see if it'll tell me, I'm going to go back to um, main menu, information. This is also good stuff to know right here. Um, right now, uh, I was looking for the, okay, here you go, on the host name, I like to change it to match the host name. So I'm just going to copy that. Right now, it's set to sun off the MQTT topic. So I'm going to go back to my main menu, configuration, MQTT. Um, I need to get my host IP of my MQTT broker, but right now I'm going to paste this portion of it and that's what I want to change there and let me go find this IP address and I'll be right back okay so all they did was um, put in the IP address of my Raspberry Pi running home assist which is happens to be the same IP address as your MQTT broker um, the port you don't mess with don't mess with this client name user name I just leave it the default I use my unique password from MQTT broker I change this to match the host name and then now I'm gonna hit save and it says a few seconds it should restart and when I'm doing all this um, there's a green light flashing on the um, sound off device and that tells me that there's not something quite set up right and we'll work on that actually I'm going to reset just again there so I'm going to swing over to my youth um, my home assist and I'm going to see if it shows up yet. Um, so I'm picking up, I don't know if that's showing up, I'm picking up un unused entities. And I'm not seeing it there. So I got something wrong somewhere, so let me trouble to shoot this out. I'll be right back. Alright, so I, I, know, I remember why it didn't show up. And see, I need to turn on something called auto discovery, which I'll show in just a second. Um, but before I do that, I want to upgrade the firmware. And right down here it says I'm running 6.6.0. Um, I don't know if there's a newer one out or not, but we'll find out. So I'm going to go to Firmware, Upgrade. And all you have to do is click this. It's already got the URL in there. Um, so you just click Start. And uh, it's actually upgrading the firmware right now. And it'll restart when it's done there. Um, I don't think it'll take too long, so I'll just keep rolling the camera there. Yeah, maybe it will. I'll go ahead and... Oop, no, it's done. You can kind of tell. Lost connection. And... It looks like it's still the same one. I'm going to hit restart. just to see minimal firmware upgrade please upgrade oh I hope I didn't do this too soon still says I think it's still doing its thing. I'm watching the saw off. It's kind of blinking and stuff. And I think it might be done. Oop, there it is. It still says six, 
six zero, so I don't know if it really upgraded. I'm gonna try it one more time. Actually, what I should do is try to figure out if that's the latest or not. But that's the process. I'm gonna be a little bit more patient with it. I'm gonna pause the camera and I'll be right back. Okay, so what I did is uh, I did it right the first time. I just went to the Tasmoto website and checked, and sure enough, it looks like six six zero is the latest one so I really didn't need to do that um, but that's a good thing to know how to do anyways so now the last step is um, I just need to turn on auto discovery so if I go into my home assistant and I select uh, unlisted devices or unused entities I'm sorry <clears throat> it doesn't show up in here yet because it doesn't know of it um, so I'll go back to here switch back over here and I'm gonna go to console and I just, I always forget the name of this command, so I just Google it and find somebody talking about it. Um, you say set option 19 to number 1. So I'm just going to copy that. Go back to my console. Going to paste that in. And when you do it, oh, that was kind of weird. I didn't expect it to do that. But if I go back to console, um, you can see the last command somewhere in here it should have said that command but you can tell it's executing it and this last line shows all the stuff that it populated over there for auto discovery so now we're pretty much done with this what I'm going to do is go back to home assistant hopefully this works unused entities and it's still not there, so I need to troubleshoot out why it's not showing up there. Okay, so here's a couple of things I want to show you. Um, one last thing I forgot to set up is you want to go into uh, configuration, configure other, and uh, I like to put in. I'll make this name match the Sonoff name up here, but I'll put an F in it so I can realize it's talking about the friendly name. Because they got too many names in this whole, in the way these things work, and it's hard to tell which name you're referring to. Um, I'm still not 100% sure what the whole friendly name thing is about. Uh, and then you want to just hit save, it'll reboot, and you'll notice the friendly name is what appears up here. So part of the problem is. By doing that, I know what this is, because it could have been the host name up there for all I know. Um, so now if I see an F in front of it, I know we're talking about the friendly name. Um, if I go to information, now we can kind of go down and look in the Wi-Fi name, and it does this weird thing here. I know where this is coming from, but I'm not even going to worry about it, because I don't use HTTP or Wi-Fi in this aspect. It's all set in my router, or my access point. Um, because it's taking like the friendly name, not even the friendly name, it's taking the, I'll tell you what ex exactly what it's taking, it's taking the topic name to derive the host name, which is kind of weird, um, but that's just what they did. And the reason why I can tell this is because there's no F in front of it. If I go through down these two settings here, you'll see... Oh, it doesn't show me the friendly name, but I know the friendly name is right up here because it says F on it. Oh, here it is. Friendly name 1. So, that's where it got that from. So, there's my friendly name. And so I can tell it's using the... It looks like it's using the MQTT topic name to, to make the host name. But anyway, so now that I set that... Um, it'll reboot and everything. I can go over to my home assist. And now we did that command set option 19 or whatever it was to 1, <clears throat> which caused it to broadcast an auto discovery packet to MQTT server. Also, a little trick if you're ever troubleshooting out something like I wasn't sure what was going on, you can go to HAS.io. I don't know if you can see what I'm clicking, clicking on. Back up a little bit there. And uh, in here you can go, ooh, that's not where I want to, configuration. Um, 
integration, mosquito brokers, probably different ways to get there. And, uh, oh no, I was, um, here it is right here. So I can tell it's showing up there. That's not what I meant to show you. I want to go to Asset. IO mosquito broker and I'll scroll down to the bottom of this and here's the log files and I'll check I'll just hit refresh but I can see at the bottom of the log file um, it says new client connected and it's the IP address of the device is working on and then so I can I can tell it made it to the um, broker if I was having trouble here I would get a message saying it was unable to connect or something like that and that will help me troubleshoot things out. Just want to show you that real quick if you're having trouble with your broker. But most of the time what you're going to do at this point is go up to the configurator for your main panel, look at unlisted entities or unused entities, whatever it says, and right there you have a switch there. Um, I'm sorry, you have a, the switch has a sensor apparently in it, um, but here's the switch right here and I can see it's using the friendly name. I wasn't sure where I was getting these names from because defaultly it was sawn off and that doesn't tell me enough information about which product I'm looking at so the friendly name populates over here and if I push this and you listen you can hear it switch off and see the lightning bolt changes there so I know the switch is working so at this point you'd go to your main menu and you'd want to add it to your switches to do that you just click on configure UI and uh, I'd go down uh, I'm not even sure how to do this. Hit edit, I think. I'll have to play around with this. I'm not good at this, and this is all new. Oh, here's an entity. And I'm going down the, sorry, going down the drop list, and there's that one right there. So I'm just going to click on that. Hit save. And there it is. Um, oh, I must have just added the, wasn't paying attention, I accidentally added the, I can tell by the symbol I added a sensor and not the switch. Let's try editing that. Let's get this out of here. Um, scroll down here again, and this time pay attention when I click on the little lightning bolt. And now, hit save, and there it is. Ah! I added the same one twice. Anyways, you get the point. Let's get this guy out of here. Hopefully it's showing up in there. Maybe it's... Go down. Oh, it's off. That's why I didn't see the... It's a blue lightning bolt. So switch. Save. And there it is. And so if I click it on... Oops. It's trying to get the telemetry data. Click it on. Turns yellow. Click it off, turns off. So it's ready for use now in home automation. So, you know, as I get better, maybe I'll make a better video of these when I learn how to do screen capture and stuff like that. But so hopefully this video will help somebody out in the steps to getting your sign off up and running. Um, anyways, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you subscribe, you'll see more videos as they come come out. And uh, thank you for watching.